participants gather here today we are privileged to host you for what promises to be an enlightening and stimulating conclusion to our series today we will delve into the fascinating and critical topic of immunological basis of hiv infection and its therapy we are honored to have dr sivakumar ms as our esteemed speaker dr sivakumar brings a wealth of knowledge and expertise to this complex subject and we are eager to hear his insights and perspectives we encourage you to actively participate in today's discussions ask questions and take full advantage of this unique opportunity to deepen your understanding your engagement is vital to making this session as impactful and rewarding as possible so thank you once again for being with us throughout this journey we look forward to the stimulating conversations and valuable takeaways that await us today let's work together to make this final day a memorable and meaningful experience thank you and enjoy the session now i would like to call upon dr m arthi head Department of Biotechnology, K. S. Rangasamy College of Arts and Science, to deliver the welcome address. Welcome, you sir. Good morning, everyone. I am delighted to extend a warm welcome to all participants, esteemed colleagues, and distinguished guests to this exciting online lecture series organized by the departments of biochemistry microbiology biotechnology and r&d cell of a sangasami college of arts and science today we are privileged to have with us a distinguished scholar and expert in the field of biotechnology dr shivakuma sir associate professor at university dr shivakuma extensive extensive research and contributions to the understanding of immunology and infectious diseases have garden recognition and respect in this scientific community our session today will focus on a critical and a highly relevant topic immunological basis of hiv infections and its therapy as we all know hiv and aids continues to be a global health challenge and understanding the immunological mechanisms underlying this condition is crucial for developing effective treatments and therapies Dr. Shivakumar will provide us with the valuable insights into the complex interactions between the HIV virus and the immune system, as well as the latest advancements in the therapeutic approaches. This lecture series is an important platform for knowledge exchange and professional development, and we are thrilled to have Dr. Shivakumar to share his expertise with us. His work is a testament to the power of scientific research. in addressing some of the most pressing health issues of our time i encourage everyone to engage actively in today's session as this is a unique opportunity to gain a deeper understanding of hiv infection and its treatment please feel free to ask questions and participate in the discussion as your involvement will enrich the learning experience for all Once again, a heartfelt thank you to Dr. Seo Kumar for taking this time to be with us today, and to all of you for joining this important event. We look forward to an enlightening and engaging lecture. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your uh, welcome address. And now uh, it's time to introduce our resource person. So I would like to call upon Dr. M. Kausalya to. introduce our resource persons today good morning to one and all present here it is my great pleasure to introduce today's distinguished speaker for our online lecture series dr ms shivakumar an eminent academic and researcher in the field of biotechnology dr shivakumar is an associate professor at the department of biotechnology peria university salem his academic journey began with a bachelor's degree honors in biotechnology from delhi university followed by a masters and a phd in the same field from the maharaja sayaji rao university of baroda with over 23 years of dedicated research experience and 17 years of teaching dr shivakumar has become a leading figure in his area of expertise 
Dr. Shivakumar's research interests are at the cutting edge of biotechnology. His work spans across nanobiotechnology, development of microbial biopesticides, plant secondary metabolites, and insect control. His research has not only contributed significantly to the scientific community, but also holds practical implications for pest management and environmental sustainability. Dr. Shivakumar's impressive portfolio includes 107 peer-reviewed publications with the total citations count exceedingly 2860 and an H-index of 31, underscoring his significant impact at this field. He is also an editorial board member for several reputable journals, including Plus One, Natural Pesticide Research, Biomed Research International, and Frontiers in Invertebrate Physiology. In recognition to of his outstanding contribution, Dr. Shivakumar has been honored with several awards, including CSIR Net Junior Research Fellowship and Senior Research Fellowship and the DST Young Scientist Award from the Government of India. His ongoing research projects funded by prestigious agencies such as DST, ICMR, UGC, uh, include studies on insecticide resistance mechanism in mosquito vectors, the role of melatonin as a developmental enhancer in insects, and the development of plant-based insecticides. These projects reflect his commitment to advancing our understanding and application of biotechnological solutions to present problems. Dr. Shivakumar has also played a pivotal role in organizing significant conferences and symposiums, such as the UGC-sponsored National Symposium on Herbs for Disease and Pest Control and the National Symposium on Climate Change and Biodiversity. University. Today, we are honored to hear from Dr. From, from our esteemed Chief Guest, Dr. M. Shivakumar, as he shares his insight and knowledge. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to introduce our esteemed Chief Guest. Now, the virtual floor is yours, sir. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Sir, the session is yours, sir. Okay. Okay, fine. Uh, so one one minute one minute yes sir. yes sir. Uh, I, I need to share my screen no right. yes sir Is it visible? No, it's not coming. No, sir. Keep it is not coming. Sir, you have to give a share option, sir. You have to click on share, sir. Yeah, I have clicked on share. Yes, sir. Oh, one second. Not getting it. Okay. But this is something it's one minute. Ah. now screen is sharing sir now you can open your no, PPT, no, no sir. Scanners. okay fine yes yes sir. now you can open your ppt and... now is it visible yes sir yeah okay uh, at the outset i would like to thank uh, so no, no the, sir ppt the... ppt is not visible sir you open your ppt in your uh, system sir. i opened Now, now is it visible? No. No, sir. No. No, sir. The, your actually your uh, Windows is uh, showing, sir. Okay, I've shared. Share uh, entire uh, screen like that. That option it is not allowing. The second, yeah, yes, sir. Now is it visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's presentation. Visible, sir. Huh? You put in yeah. a presentation mode, sir. Yes, sir. Ah. Now, now you can see, no? Yes, sir. So please press F5, sir, so that uh, full screen will come. Sir. Yeah, yeah. It, yes, this full screen only. Yeah. No? Oh, no, sir. No, sir. Yes. 
Para ser a França. Hello. Yes, sir. See? Now is, is the screen visible? No, sir. No? No. No, sir. No, sir. Okay. I'm not getting the share option itself. Uh, yeah. Right now. Share content. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, now I go to the uh, entire screen, no? Yes, sir. That share option it, itself, it's not opening. Shall I send you my uh, slide? Yes, sir. You send me, sir. Send me uh, the uh, mail, sir. Then we'll share here. Sir. Okay. Then after that, you uh, you get an option that take a control, sir. Yeah. You put you do the take a control, sir. Then uh, we'll operate. Sir. Okay. 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 Yes. Just a minute. Yes, sir. I don't know because of antivirus. I, I guess there is some kind of a conflict. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. So send me the mail, sir. Then uh, I will share from this set. Yeah, I have already sent. Uh, just check. No? Has it come? One second, sir. I'm checking. Uh -huh. No, sir. Mail did not come, sir. Uh, just refresh it, no? It will come. Ah, oh, yes. No, I yeah? can't. Mm. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, one second, sir. We'll share it, sir. Then okay. you have an okay. option that to take a control option, sir. If you click the take a control option, means you can operate from your side itself. Sir. Yeah. yeah. Please wait for one minute, sir. We are sharing. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Maybe because of the file size? I don't think so. That's the problem. No, oh, it's not a problem, sir. It is loading, sir. Yeah. Because few images are there. Maybe it yes, will sir. be slightly heavy.
now is it my screen visible yes sir now it's visible it's visible yes sir now now the slide is visible yes sir yes sir so please take Full a control screen? sir you, you have a option that take a control sir okay so you click that means then you can operate your slides sir oh sure okay uh, yes, uh, i guess it's visible Full screen? yes sir it is is visible sir you can start oh, fine okay uh, so <laughs> lot of trouble uh, early on but uh, <laughs> yes, at the outset i would like to thank uh, uh, department of biotechnology uh, which is headed by dr sarvanan and uh, all all the faculty members and the organizing secretary dr sakti babu and uh, um, the uh, other sister departments of biotechnology the head of the department dr arati from biotechnology uh, for giving us uh, giving me this opportunity to uh, be a part of this uh, uh, five day uh, lecture series and uh, i would like to share a few uh, aspects of uh, research which has uh, Uh, which is uh, already going on in the field of uh, hiv therapy and uh, this is a big area and a lot of research in past three decades have already uh, start uh, are being go going on but as we know that this particular uh, topic uh, or the area uh, is very challenging and uh, there is lot of scope for uh, the future generations and uh, our students to take part in uh, active research in this particular domain so i'll be giving you an overview of uh, what is hiv and then i'll i'll talk a little bit about how hiv spreads in human beings so uh, it will be a combination of uh, immunology and then we'll look into uh, how what are the existing treatment methods and uh, these methods target which part of the life cycle of hiv and also we'll be looking at uh, the, the uh, what are the future research initiatives that uh, people have uh, uh, already started taking and uh, in future what are, are the challenges in aids research so this is a gist of whatever presentation i am going to talk about so let's go so we know that hiv infection is caused by a virus it's an immunodeficiency virus and uh, it's a uh, what we call as an aids virus and aids is basically a, a symptom of uh, the viral infection in advanced stage so aids acquired immunodeficiency syndrome is the advanced stage of hiv infection and that's what we call as aids now hiv virus it attacks our immune cells one kind of immune cells called as cd4 positive cells and other we call it as macrophage now these cd4 positive cells are also called as cd uh, t helper cells it's a kind of lymphocyte which is a kind of wbc and macrophage is uh, derived from monocyte which is a type of wbc when monocyte leaves the blood and comes into the tissues we call them as macrophages and macrophages are phagocytic cells and uh, cd4 positive cells or t helper cells are uh, the cells which will connect our innate immune mechanism with adaptive immune mechanism so we will be looking into how this connectivity is there now the what i am driving here is hiv it targets you these two cells primarily and these two cells are very important for proper functioning of our immune system now without a treatment for hiv we will find that this virus slowly it destroys our immune system and as a result our immunity to normal infection become less so treatment is very essential for this particular disease and uh, with treatment we are we in the, it is not a cure but the whatever drugs are there it helps our immune system to get better so that it can defend against other kind of infections which are caused due to 
reduction of immunity. So those kind of diseases the person doesn't get. Now, th this is what uh, this image shows you that over a period of years, like from two years to 10 years, look at the number of these blue cells. They represent the T helper cells and the red cells represent the viruses. So we, what we find is as the HIV infection progresses in a person's body, then we find that the number of T helper cells number reduces and viral population increases. Now, when we look into the demography, like what is the spread and how much is the, uh, how much population is affected. Now, as per 2023, December 2023 estimates of WHO, we find that almost 40 million people, that is 40 into 10 lakhs across the globe are infected. Among this, 38.6 are adults and 1.4 million are children. Now you may think that this doesn't add up to this 39.9 million. It will be slightly higher. So that happens when we usually go for such kind of demographic studies. Now among this 38 million adults, we, oh, sorry, the 39.9 million population 53 are women and children girls especially now in the past year itself in one year almost 1.3 million individuals have acquired new infections and uh, if you look at the trend we are seeing that there is a decline in hiv infections 39 percent decline since 2010 and uh, in 1995 it was very high almost 59 percent so it has reduced now okay now when we look at the countries which are affected we find that most of them are from africa and then we have india in terms of number of individuals affected and then you have russia and other african countries and south american countries so essentially when we look at the number of the, the population which is affected we find that african continent and indian continent are the ones which are affected in terms of numbers so that's why our outlook for controlling hiv and uh, finding out a cure becomes very important now let us look at the structure of hiv virus we know that hiv virus is a rna virus so there are different kinds of viruses this is a single standard rna virus and this why we can see here rna genome along with this rna you have an enzyme called as reverse transcriptase and there is another protein called as integrase you have protease these are all certain proteins and enzymes which are going to be very important when we are going to talk about here and then on top there is glycoprotein 120 and glycoprotein 41. so it is this glycoprotein which we are going to look for in terms of immunotherapy so let us look into how uh, what are the different strains and then we'll see how hiv infection occurs now worldwide when we look into there are two different kinds of strains possibly three but these two are widely studied hiv1 and hiv2 now, when we look into the structure, both are single standard RNA viruses. Both have same kind of reverse transcriptase, but there are minor, minor differences in the sequences of the proteins and the enzymes which is present. Now, in case of HIV-1, we have glycoprotein 120 and GP41. The earlier slide we must have seen here that you have GP41 and GP120. Here, GP41 and GP120. So essentially, whatever research we are doing, we are doing on HIV1 single strain, HIV1 strain, but HIV2, we are not very much interested, at least in the Indian subcontinent. I'll tell you why later on. Now, if you look into the glycoprotein here, HIV2, it is different. 
so there are small small differences in these two strains that make them apart and because of these differences the virulence capacity of these two strains are also different okay right now when we look at the phylogenetic tree we find that hiv1 is different from your hiv2 and this hiv2 is very similar to simian viruses now simian viruses are hiv like viruses which are common in monkeys so those kind of viruses hiv2 is similar to simian virus immunodeficiency virus so we will be focusing mainly on hiv if you look at hiv1 then there are variety of strains you have c a g f okay you can just see here so these are all different strains now in terms of strains when we look into so as we know we have said that hiv is of two types one and two and hiv1 has three strains m and o and m has variety of clades and among this when we look at our country and our continent we find that it is the c clad m strain hiv1 c clad which is c which is involved in 90% of okay. in india okay. now when we look into the distribution worldwide the same thing we are showing in terms of the image we find that in indian subcontinent you have the c kind of strain which is there Okay. Dear participants, kindly now, mute your mics. Now, across the countries, if you look at strains, let us look at India and China. We are very close, but you look at the what kind of the strains are there. You find that in the M strain, okay, we have. c kind of plant whereas in case of china you have b c and a combination of b c so there are there are differences what we find so that means aids we know that it has evolved hiv has originated from africa and then it has traveled worldwide and in across the world you find that it has mutated and uh, there is a country specific strain which is there or continent specific strain to be uh, proper we, uh, and this keeps on evolving because of its rna genome so we'll we'll look into this later on now when we look at the symptoms all kinds of common symptoms like fever weakness weight loss okay it is associated with the uh, a, a person who is diagnosed with uh, aids but this is a common problem which you can find in any kind of a disease so if you look into the blood count and you find that the cd4 positive cell count is below 200 per millimeter millimeter cube that is cubic millimeter one ml of blood you take and you find that only 200 cells are there cd4 positive cells then you can be very sure that that particular person is having aids so this is one of the marker for aids okay now in case of a person who is suffering from aids you find that almost all the body organs right starting from skin to brain okay to all important regions of our organs of our body are affected so it's a systemic problem and in addition to this because of lack of information there is a lot of social stigma which is attached to a person who is uh, infected with hiv right now in india at least this particular social stigma has reduced to a very great extent but still a person who is infected doesn't come out openly and says that 
he or she is infected. So that kind of problem is, is still there in India. But there is no need for social stigma. We, this part, we are very well, uh, very clear, and everyone knows that preventive measures like sex without condom with an unknown partner, okay, uh, passage from mother to baby, okay, sharing of injectable needles and contaminated blood transfusion. These are all different sources, okay, by which 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 can be used for preventing so you should not use shared needles contaminated blood should not be transfused okay from mother to baby uh, this uh, virus can pass through placenta placenta so we should be very careful okay that infected mothers when they are bearing the child they should take certain precautions and uh, this is already known to you people okay now, what are the general myths about AIDS? Insect bite, toilet seat, kissing, uh, sharing the food or touching, all this doesn't transmit AIDS. Okay, all this we already know, but to just tell you. So this is in general about what is a, a virus and what, how, why we should study about this. Now, when we look into our immune system, we know that as a biologist, that our immune system is made up of lymph nodes and you have lymphatic organs, thymus, you have spleen, you have bone marrow, already all, all these things we know. Now, in terms of whenever we are talking about immune system, then we talk about the two parts of the immune system. One is innate and other is adaptive. Now, innate immune system, we know that it uh, we have it from by birth, adaptive immune system develops after the child is born and uh, when the particular child is exposed to certain antigens then adaptive immunity develops now we find that this innate and adaptive immune system are connected by two kinds of cells one we call as antigen presenting cell and other is a naive t cell that is a t cell which is not exposed to any antigen okay well it is the hiv virus it affects this particular cell these two cells so what it does is it does not allow the innate and the adaptive immune response to make a coordinated effort to remove the virus so that's where the trouble is so innate immune structures we already know that we have skin, the pH in our stomach, okay, our my, normal microflora in our intestine, okay, antimicrobial peptides which are secreted by our uh, uh, body surfaces like uh, the urinogenital tract or our mouth, okay, our tears, all this are uh, part of innate immune uh, responses. Apart from that, we also have other subtle uh, cells like natural killer cells macrophages and uh, your uh, other phagocytic cells like neutrophils eosinophils all these are part of your innate immune response so when in hematopoiesis which is the production of blood cells we find that in long in bone marrow the hematopoietic stem cell it divides into two lineages one is myeloid other is lymphoid lineage myeloid lineage gives rise to all the granulocytes granulocytic wbc cells which include eosinophil basophils and neutrophils in addition to that your rbcs and your platelets and from this monocytes you find that dendritic cells and macrophages are produced now we have to look into this dendritic cell and macrophage because the it is these cells which are going to be affected by hiv along with this t cell from lymphoid lineage so from lymphoid lineage you have lymphocytes t cells b cells and natural killer cells and uh, we know that b cells produce plasma cells this just an overview of what is uh, the hematopoietic system. 
Now, when we look at the innate immune response, this is the left side, and the right side is adaptive immune response. There are two cells which are in gray areas which overlap innate and adaptive immunity. This is the natural killer cells and the gamma delta kind of T cells. Now, this gamma delta and natural killer cells are basically what we uh, think is till now that they are part of innate immune response. Now, recent research has to, shown that along with this, they are also a part of some kind of adaptive immune responses are also seen in by these kind of cells. Okay. Now, this is a clonal proliferation theory which says that whenever an antigen comes and antigen is taken or received by an, uh, a B cell, immediately that particular B cell is going to get activated and then it is going to produce a clone of its own type and this clone is going to differentiate into memory cell and plasma cell and plasma cell is going to produce antibodies this is a general view of how b cells multiply the same image we are seeing here this is a set of pathogens which we see in the top and uh, these pathogens are eaten by dendritic cells once they are eaten that is phagocytosed. Once they are phagocyto phagocytosing the pathogens, they will break it down into small peptides. And these peptides will be loaded onto a special type of molecules called as MHC molecules. Major histocompatibility complex molecules. These are cell surface proteins which are there on cell membrane. And uh, in these proteins, we find that small antigenic peptides from these pathogens are attached. Now, such peptides are recognized by the helper T cells. Once they recognize these helper T cells, they get activated by a mechanism called as signal transduction. By the signal which goes here, it gets activated. An activated T helper cell produces certain molecules, small molecules called as cytokines. It is secreted outside the T helper cell, and this cytokine goes and activates B cells and B cells they divide into plasma cells and memory B cells. So you find that activation of B cell for production of a particular type of antibody requires the work of or the role of T helper cells you remove this T helper cells, you will find that B cells will not differentiate into plasma cells. So no antibodies will be produced. So this, just keep this in mind. We will see what kind of impact AIDS virus does. The same image we can see here. In the earlier image, we saw a dendritic cell, which is a type of antigen presenting cell. Here we are looking at another cell called as macrophage, which does the same thing. A pathogen comes near it, it is phagocytosed, broken into small pieces, loaded onto MHC molecule, and then here you can see it is presented to a T cell. So the kind of T cell which is going to interact with macrophage, it depends on what type of MHC molecule is there. If it is MHC class 2 molecule, which is showing the peptide, T helper cell, TH2 cell comes and recognizes this. If antigen is loaded on MHC class 1 molecule, uh, MHC class 1 kind of, and uh, if a peptide is loaded on MHC class 1 molecule, then cytotoxic T cells are recognized. Now, what we see here is that this antigen presentation is occurring on MHC class 2 cells. So MHC class 2 proteins present the peptide to T helper cells. T helper cells get activated. Once they get activated, they produce cytokines. It activates B cell. B cell produces plasma cells and memory B cells. 
plasma cells produce antibodies antibodies go and bind to antigen this is classical immunology okay how b cell are activated by t cells so the same image that means this system cells or macrophage that is these are antigen presenting cells are very important for communication between innate and adaptive immune response okay. now macrophages are present in different locations in our body in almost all the tissues we have including brain where you call them as microglial cells in lungs we call them as alveolar or bronchial macrophages liver you have Kuffer cells. So, all the tissues, important tissues are, of our body have macrophages. So, macrophages are very important. Now, let us look at how HIV infects a macrophage and how HIV infects a CD4 positive cell, that is T helper cell. So, you find that HIV interacts with glycoprotein 120 and CD4 okay so hiv has glycoprotein 120 and this particular t cell is having cd4 receptor and they join and they fuse so it is this particular cd4 receptor which is the site where hiv is going to bind so a more clearer image We'll see. So I'll skip this. Okay, this is virus types. Okay. Now you can see here that this is a HIV virus and this is the CD4 protein. It binds. Once it is by, bound, then this entire virus, viral membrane, fuses with our own body cell, that is macrophage or T helper cell in this case it is a T helper cell and the entire content which is there inside the virus that is the genetic material that is RNA and then proteins like reverse transcriptase, integrase, proteases all these are released into the cytoplasm. Now this reverse transcriptase immediately converts the RNA which is the genetic material into cDNA and this is the red color one cdna and this cdna comes and joins with our own dna and this you call it as integration so these are different steps okay in viral infection once it is integrated immediately this dna keeps on multiplying produces many copies of of its own uh, self that is dna and we know that RNA is the genome. So from this DNA, immediately transcription occurs, RNA is produced, and this RNA is packaged in uh, 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 around, uh, it is packaged into the viral code, and then it is budded off outside. And this is how entire viral cycle works. Now, when we look into the genome of the RNA, now it's a HIV-1, we find that it is having essentially three gene complexes. One you call as N, other is GAG, and the third one is Paul. So these are the three okay, genes which are very, very important for any of the retrovirus. Any functional retrovirus, you talk about a COVID virus or you talk about any RNA virus, you will have all these three. Now, what is the importance of this three N? This particular gene is going to produce a protein called as GP120 and GP41, which are there on the surface of HIV1. Now, you look at GAG, it provides the structural part of the virus, that is capsid, nucleocapsid complex, budding protein and matrix this gives the it, it produces the structure for the viral particle and then pol that is enzymes you have 
protease enzyme called as PR. You have reverse transcriptase RT. Then you have integrase enzyme called as IN. Now all this are produced by this particular complex. Now you may wonder how a single particular gene, we know that one gene can produce only one enzyme or one protein or one polypeptide. Now how one particular gene is producing so many different kinds of enzymes or so many kind of proteins. We find that the answer lies in the modification in the uh, transcription patterns. We call them as, uh, as we uh, we know that in case of eukaryotes, there is something called as RNA splicing, which occurs once transcription happens. That is removal of introns from exons. Now, virus in bacteria, we don't have RNA splicing. Viruses, they utilize the same machinery, even though they don't have introns, they utilize a machinery called as alternate splicing to produce more than one type of protein components from a single gene. And that's the reason why, even though the viral genes are very low, but more number of proteins are produced. Now, this is again a, a, a structure earlier what we have already seen. So we have envelope, this red color part, and then inside you are having something called as a capsid. Within the capsid, you have the genome that is RNA and the enzymes which we talked about. Already we have looked in, at these seven stages. Now, if you look, is I don't know whether it is clear or not, binding, so we are looking at where all we can target HIV. If you want to treat HIV, so what are the stages or, or stages in the life cycle which can be targeted? The one is binding of the HIV virus to the CD4 positive receptor. Now, CD4 positive receptor, there is along with this, there is another receptor called as CCR5 receptor. Now, the virus utilizes the CCR5 receptor for entering inside, for fusing. We'll look into this. So binding. So this is one stage where we can use certain medicines and we can competitively bind the receptors with drugs so that virus doesn't come and bind. Second is preventing fusion of this nucleus, uh, sorry, this virus with our cell. The third is you can stop the reverse transcriptase enzyme from functioning so that more number of viral copies are not produced. Or we can stop integration of the cDNA, which is the viral DNA, with our own chromosome. We can also stop the virus from escaping that particular cell. And also, we can stop the virus from maturing. So there are different stages where we can target the virus. So we'll, we have medicines for all the stages. So we'll look at this one by one. So this is in general. One thing only what I would like to see show you here is HIV binds to CD4. And there is another protein called as CCR5. So remember this CCR5 also. You can see here that where all we can block this particular virus attachment. It binds with CD4 and then it rolls over and CCR5 and it binds here. So you have inhibitors, you can block CCR5 so virus does not fuse, it cannot enter. Or you see to it that this particular virus, once it comes here, it cannot fuse. Will once or if the virus still manages to fuse, comes inside, you have, okay, you can stop it here using NRTs and NNRTIs. 
we will look into all this okay this is how there are different this red color structures it show the, these are the ones where which are pharmacological targets so we'll look at this one by one so among the drugs which are available based on the targets the first one is nrti which you call it as nucleoside rti that is reverse transcriptase inhibitor another is non nucleotide uh, sorry non nucleoside rti you have protease inhibitor you have fusion inhibitors you have ccr5 antagonist which bind to ccr5 protein on the membrane integrase inhibitors maturation maturation inhibitors and integrase stand inhibitors so these are all different classes nrti and nnrti these are the two early drugs which were identified now what they do is they go and bind when the virus is multiplying now for multiplication nucleotides are required so what happens is this nrtis are having triphosphorylated these are triphosphorylated as dntps are having two phosphates now when this triphosphorylated nucleoside comes and binds then there is a chain termination which happens so the dna cannot multiply or the dna polymerase doesn't function it stops so what happens we can cut down the viral replication rates so as a result what do you do what happens the viral load comes down now the problem is this is a very effective treatment nrta and nnrta for when the virus is affecting macrophage but it is not effective when virus is affecting t helper cells so we find that this particular virus has two targets macrophage and cd4 positive cells both are in, important for our immune system and we have to protect both of them this among this nrta and nnrta we find that non nucleus yeah, reverse, reverse transcriptase inhibitors are hybridizing serving the ya and play ba vandra kanna oru dandu vechirana kekka vera hmm dear participant kindly mute your mic so what we find is this non nucleoside rti they bind to a hydrophobic pocket in on reverse transcriptase so it changes the enzyme structure and dna does not function okay so this is a, uh, it is very cost effective method and what we find is it is non nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors which are there in the market because they are cheap easy to synthesize and they are very effective in reducing the viral replication now another class is protease inhibitors what they do they go and bind to viral proteases and block the breakdown of or cleavage of gag and gag pol polyprotein so where do you find gag pol polyprotein you find that once they come inside here and they are going to produce certain proteins and from this they are, this gag and pol will produce different kinds of proteins okay they they separate and they produce small small proteins so protease inhibitors what they do is they block this breaking so there is a big protein but it is not functional so this prevents the release of infectious particles so new infectious particles cannot be made you find that in case of macrophage that is monocyte derived macrophages there is a huge production of rna the viral particle production is high even in presence of pi that means this protease inhibitors are effective for t helper cells but they are not effective on macrophages then you have integrase integrase inhibitors what they do they stop the binding of cdna that is the viral dna particles to our own chromosome so this is very effective in both 
helper cells and macrophages. Now there are certain inhibitors called as entry inhibitors. These inhibitors block the attachment of HIV virus to our T helper cells. So we know that N is a gene which is going to produce glycoprotein 120 and glycoprotein 41. Now this glycoprotein 120, it binds to CCR5. Where is CCR5? It is near CD4 positive, uh, CD4 glycoprotein on the T helper cell. Now once it binds to CCR5, there is fusion. Now what we can do is we can block this contact of GP120 with CCR5. Okay. As a result, when we block it, you will find what? That there is a conformational change which happens in GP41. Why? Because GP120 and GP41 are attached to one another. Okay. And this leads to what? It blocks the movement of the virus into the cell. So virus, it cannot attach to T helper cells, so it cannot come inside. Now a medicine called as postimisavir. This binds to HIV envelope GP120 and prevents binding to CD4 receptors. So it inhibits entry of CD4 positive cells. So this is one of the very important drugs. Now CCR5 is also expressed on mono macrophages and uh, you find that that means this CCR5 okay uh, the uh, sorry this particular drug is very effective on T helper cells as well as on macrophages. Now there is another class of inhibitors we call it maturation inhibitors. You find that in this maturation inhibitors, they stop the final assembly of virus. That virus has multiplied inside the cell. Now it has to package itself. The RNA has to come. All the enzymes has to come. This has to be packaged. And then only if the final virus particle comes out. Now this requires the, that the polyprotein which is present in GAG to be cut into small, small proteins, which make up matrix, nucleic acid, okay, P6 protein. Now, maturation inhibitor, what they do is they prevent this cutting of GAG polyprotein into different kinds of small functional proteins. So such kind of inhibitors are also available. Now, then what is the problem? We have all kinds of drugs, okay, inhibitors. The, now the problem is that the people, there is no cure. It is only what we are stopping the virus from multiplying, but virus is still inside our body. So people have to take this therapy or these medicines on a daily basis in the form of injections or pills. Now, this is a big problem because you cannot, if you forget for one day, then again the viral load increases. So, what people have, they are looking for that long term medicines that you go once and then for two, three months you don't go. So, there are certain newer long acting medicines which are there, which can be injected every two months. So, such kind of uh, medicines, injections are also available right now which people use which are who are infected they take now and art is what anti retroviral therapy is it has to be taken by almost everyone now this antiretroviral therapy it protect or or it prevents from the uh, uh, prevents or uh, protects the patient from having a high hiv viral load so viral load is reduced, so your immune system is still capable of functioning. That's the only advantage these medicines give, but they are not cure for HIV. So there is no cure till now. Now there are other classes of retroviral drugs, okay? One is ART, other is 
non nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors as i told you they are cheaper easier to produce than protease inhibitors and they are very popular so these are usually taken as medicines as tablets now when we look into the development of drugs for hiv we find that in 2007 an integrase inhibitor called as raltigravir was approved and immediately you find that within a couple of years another drug came into market which is a second generation integrase inhibitor so there is a huge okay uh, demand for new classes of drugs which are there now when we look into the treatment we find that this uh, the treatment for hiv the first drug to be uh, approved by fda for hiv treatment was azithromycin now this was meant for as a cancer therapy for cancer they have identified this particular drug but they found that this is a very good okay uh, a very effective against hiv and it is a kind of nrti this is the first generation nrti nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitor after this immediately you find that zt another another combination came and now you find something called as triple drug therapy which is a combination of protease inhibitor and two nrtis two classes one is zt and azithromycin this is usually given the big viral load they go for heart that is highly active antiretroviral therapy which uses two different classes of drugs like protease inhibitors or nrti or integrase and nrti in such in different combinations they use so this is what so whatever drugs we are having right now we find that they are meant for increasing the longevity of the patient and the particular patient still has the ability to transmit virus to other people if proper precautions are not taken so now what is the future like what can we do so one is you design a long okay you develop long lasting therapies so that the hiv patients do not come on a daily basis to hospitals in so this can be done by long lasting drugs or broadly act, neutralizing antibodies like you design antibodies which can neutralize hivs or you design some therapeutic vaccine now long acting drugs you can take it in the form of injectables or uh, pills or patches or implants there are variety of uh, methods and these are these the the uh, these are two drugs which are uh, already approved as a long lasting drugs which are taken as injectables now after covid what we find is there is a huge leap for therapeutic vaccines now therapeutic vaccines are vaccines which are taken in adults to uh, for treatment of one particular kind of a disease now therapeutic hiv vaccines are also the need of the art like the uh, the way in which we got our covid shots so can we get vaccines for hiv so there is a huge demand for this but what we find is that there is huge work has been going on for past two decades but there is no successful vaccine till now there is one vaccine which was developed in 2003 we call it as rv44 vaccine and uh, in 2007 trials were done in thailand we, we, and it was found that it was 31% effective but not 100% immediately after few years we find that another formulation of this particular vaccine called as hvtn702 okay which is which was a combination of adenoviral vector was used and uh, apart from this there is no uh, significant uh, effectiveness of this vaccines are there so therapeutic vaccines are still being developed and modernized now another vaccine is mrna based vaccine which we had seen in case uh, during covid and uh, moderna 
is also developing an, a therapeutic vaccine based on mrna uh, for uh, or, uh, for humans but it is still uh, yet to see uh, come into the market now what this mrna vaccines do is they selectively code for one particular protein of uh, of the virus which does not change now hiv like our coronavirus has the ability to change or mutate very fast why because rna viruses they multiply by reverse transcriptase enzyme so rna has to be converted into cdna the cdna will form its own another double strand and then from that strand the rna has to uh, the dna will transcribe to produce rna and that rna is again the, the viral rna or the nucleic uh, the genomic material of the hiv when rna is being converted into cdna now reverse transcriptase enzyme is prone to error so there are a lot of mismatched nucleotides which are added by reverse transcriptase and as a result mutations come so retroviruses that's because of their faulty replication mechanism because of that reverse transcriptase does not have any proof reading mechanism you find that number of mutations added into genome is high so that's why we find that viruses keep on mutating now another method is using mrnas and coating it with nanoparticles lipid nanoparticles and targeting the only the viruses okay hiv only so such kind of uh, methods are also uh, are being researched now the advantage of this method is what you can selectively target the uh, virus for the uh, hiv virus in our body and uh, this is it uh, it's a kind of targeted drug delivery system which we can use it now in the past two years two therapies one is stem cell based therapy and crispr based therapy has come into market and into research and huge work is going on one example there are almost seven patients who have been cured cured means they are they do not have hiv in their body entirely it is removed and that credit goes to stem cell therapy in stem cell therapy what we do is we uh, irradiate the bone marrow with uh, gamma rays or uh, other uh, radiations so our entire uh, stem cells which are going to produce hematopoietic stem cells which are going to produce uh, your uh, different wbcs and lymphocytes everything is removed it is killed and then we take hematopoietic stem cells from a donor and this donor has a mutation in ccr5 gene the ccr5 gene will produce ccr5 protein and ccr5 proteins are the ones which bind with the viral glycoprotein 120 so what we do we take from the donor hematopoietic stem cells and then we inject it into our bone marrow and then we allow this bone marrow to start multiplying okay to uh, to uh, we allow this bone marrow to produce what uh hematopoietic stem cells in huge numbers and then these cells differentiate into b cells and t cells and so what we are essentially doing is we are reprogramming our immunity this is a big okay uh, work and the problem associated with the stem cell therapy is what that some most of the time it is okay but it is not 100% effective sometimes we get other kinds of problems associated with uh, stem cell therapy so it has to be used with care 
so we understand that now the other aspect is using crispr based therapy so can we remove we are not injecting anything so if we remove ccr5 gene from our cells from our t helper cells so there will be no aids infection so that's what this excision biotherapies are doing one time gene therapy for hiv patients so what they are trying to do is can you cut and remove hiv from your genome one this is what these people are doing what i told you is what can you mutate this particular gene in our cells itself so that hiv cannot bind so these are all this excision biotherapeutics they are trying to remove hiv from our genome so that the patients are free of the disease another method is single treatment cell therapy that's what what i told you then you have genetic engineering genetically engineered cd34 for uh, positive hematopoietic stem cell and progenitor cells okay this is also one area where people are uh, working or immunomodulators in combination with antiretroviral therapies and uh, one kind of immunomodulators are abzymes and what scientists have found out is there are different kinds of abzymes so one type they are not telling which one they can target one gp120 protein and it they this particular abzymes they cut down certain pro, uh, portions in this gp120 so that they cannot bind with cd4 so binding ability is lost another research is on nanoparticle coated uh, coated with a, a molecule called as melitin melitin is a molecule from honey bee venom and this molecule is known to damage viral membrane so we can coat it with nanoparticles and then we can you do a targeted drug delivery these are all in different stages of research but uh, uh, we don't know how many of them will uh, be commercialized or effective now one of the uh, drug which is going to be very effective is a drug which can target caspase 1 enzyme now this caspase enzyme we know about apoptosis now whenever hiv infection occurs we find that the t helper cell dies we know that the number is reduced now how the number reduces one is that t helper cells undergo apoptosis there is another mechanism we call it as pyroptosis now there is some fundamental difference between apoptosis and pyroptosis we will not go into the details of this the one thing which you should look into is apoptosis happens by activation of caspase 3 as a downstream enzyme whereas here caspase 1 is involved pyroptosis and if you look at the hiv infection we find that 95% of hiv in related t, t helper cell death occurs by pyroptosis now what pyroptosis does is it produces chronic inflammation along with cd4 positive cell death apoptosis does not produce chronic inflammation now if you have inflammation immediately you will find that other immune cells are attracted to that particular area and immediately the virus gets hold of new immune cells and it multiplies in huge number if you can reduce inflammation you find that even after virus multiplies okay cell will not die cell doesn't break open so viral load will be is there inside the cell but viral multiplication will stop because from the cell it cannot escape so this is a new method which people are looking into so there are huge amount of research which is going on and still we have big challenges one is that in our body 
this virus can sit inside our chromosome and we cannot find any symptoms asymptomatic cases now targeting hiv inside macrophage is a big challenge because there is no cell in our body which can kill our mac macrophages in our body macrophages there is no cell which can kill it is the master cell which it can kill all the other cells so hiv remains inside macrophage we do not have any method to stop it now monocyte ligands and cell ligands targets need to be identified if you have to target macrophage then you have to look for some specific targets on macrophages which can be used so these are the challenges so i hope so at least a few of you can take up research in this particular area very interesting okay huge funding is available and you can use this so with this i'll stop uh, the presentation and uh, hiv is like a, a, any virus so there is a cure definitely will have a cure so the only thing is it's only a matter of time with the whatever technologies we have I think in another next decade hiv is not going to be a big problem okay thank you everyone for patient listening and if you have any queries or questions you are free to ask so thank you sir thank you for your excellent presentation and valuable information regarding hiv virus uh dear participants the session is open for questions and discussions so if you have any questions or queries you can ask sir I think I had taken for a long time. I guess I, I no, sir, no, sir. overshot the time by few it's, minutes. It's, it, it, <laughs> it's an informative, sir. It's an informative, sir. Excellent. You have uh, uh, presented with excellent illustrations and uh, valuable mechanisms and all. So we gained a lot of knowledge. So, dear participants, the session is open for the discussion. So now, if you have any questions, you can ask. Any questions or queries from the participants? So please feel free to interact with the sir. He has a vast experience in this field, so he can uh, clarify your doubts. So please utilize this opportunity. Okay, so if uh, uh, no questions or uh, queries are not there, means we will move forward. Again, is there any questions from your participants? That's right. So thank you, sir. Uh, now it's a time to uh, give a report on the five days uh, online lecture series since this is the final day. So now I would like to call upon Dr. S. Vadivakarasi, Assistant Professor, Department of Biochemistry, to propose the report of the event and concluding remarks. Welcome you, ma'am. Sir? I whether my, my voice is audible. Yes, yes, yes ma'am. You are audible, ma'am. Please continue. Yeah, yes. Sir, very nice presentation, sir. Thank you, sir. So, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed colleagues and distinguished guests, a very good afternoon to all. It is with immense pride and profound gratitude that I stand before you today to mark the successful conclusion of our online lecture series organized by departments of biochemistry, microbiology, biotechnology, 
and R&D cell, K. S. Rangasamy College of Arts and Science, Tiruchangur, Tamil Nadu. Over the past five days, we have embarked on ex extraordinary journey of learning and collaboration, one that has truly transcended geographical boundaries and institutional limits. When we initiated this series, our goal was clear: to create a platform for knowledge exchange, to foster academic growth. and to bring together diverse voices from across the country today as we reflect on our achievements i am delighted to share that we have not only met but exceeded our expectations with 575 registrations from participants hailing from various corners of tamil nadu chennai coimbatore namakkal salem tiruchi karur and beyond from states as distant as Uttar Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh, and Telangana. Our series has successfully united a broad spectrum of individuals and institutions. This remarkable turnout is a testament to the enthusiasm and commitment of our academic community. Our heartfelt thanks go to the five distinguished research persons who generously shared their expertise with us. Their invaluable contributions, coming from esteemed institutions across India. have enriched our understanding and inspired our intellectual curiosity each lecture has been a beacon of knowledge illuminating various facets of our fields of study to the participants your engagement and dedication has been the cornerstone of this series your questions discussions and feedback have not only enriched the learning experience but have also created a vibrant and interactive environment that reflects the true spirit of academic collaborations we are grateful to the entire team at case or cas for their unwavering support and meticulous organization of this event your efforts behind the scenes have ensured the smooth execution of this series and for that we extend our deepest appreciation as we conclude this chapter let us carry forward the insight we have gained and the connections we have formed let us continue to foster a spirit to a spirit of curiosity and collaboration that transcends barriers and drives us toward excellence thank you once again to everyone who has contributed to the success of this online lecture series your participation and support have made this endeavor a resounding success and we look forward to many more opportunities for learning and growth together congratulations to the organizers and participants who made the knowledge gained here continue to inspire and guide us in our academic and professional journeys thank you now i call dr bb satibabu to propose the oath of thanks thank you ma'am thank you so much thank you for your uh, concluding remarks and the report of the event so now i would like to take this opportunity to propose the oath of thanks so ladies and gentlemen so good afternoon as we come to the end of this enriching online lecture series it is with immense gratitude that i take this opportunity to extend a heartfelt vote of thanks to everyone who has made this event a remarkable success first and foremost our deepest thanks go to late lion dr k s rangasamy mj of the esteemed founder and mr r srinivasan chairman of ksr educational institutions your steadfast guidance and support have been pivotal in bringing this event to life we also extend our sincere appreciation to mr sachin srinivasan vice chairman ksr educational institutions and mr kavita srinivasan executive director of ks rangasamy college of arts and science for their invaluable contributions your leadership and commitment have been fundamental in shaping this series into a resounding success we are profoundly grateful to dr v padmanabhan principal of ks rangasamy college of arts and science whose encouragement and support have fostered an environment conducive to this event success our thanks also go to dr v radhakrishnan director of skill development ks rangasamy college of arts and science and ks rangasamy college of arts and science for women dr m prasanna rajesh kumar vice principal and dr g saravanan dean of school of sciences and humanities for their essential roles in organizing and supporting this series your support and encouragement has been instrumental in ensuring the smooth execution of this program further 
I would like to express our deepest gratitude to our distinguished resource persons, Dr. Umesh Kumar, Professor and Head, IMS Ghaziabad, Uttar Pradesh, Dr. Balaji Meriga, Professor, Department of Biochemistry, Sri Venkateswara University, Tirupati, Andhra Pradesh, Dr. J. Venkateswara Rao, Professor, Department of Zoology, Osmania University, Hyderabad, Telangana, Dr. R. Bhagiraz, Head, Department of Microbiology, Sri Nehru Mahavidyalaya College of Arts and Science, Coimbatore, and Dr. Sivakumar M.S., Associate Professor, Department of Biotechnology, Periyar University, Siena. Your expertise, dedication, and willingness to share your knowledge have been instrumental in making this series both informative and inspiring. The depth of insight you provided has enriched our understanding and sparked intellectual curiosity across all participants. To the 575 participants who registered from various institutions across Tamil Nadu, including Chennai, Coimbatore, Namakal, Salem, Tirichi, Karur, and from other states such as Uttar Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh, and Telangana. Your enthusiasm and engagement have been the lifeblood of this program. Your active participation, thoughtful questions, and keen interest have created a dynamic learning environment that has greatly enhanced the experience for all involved. A special thanks goes to the organizing team of this online lecture series, organizing secretaries, Dr. V.V. Satibabu Odendram and Dr. S. Vadivakrasi, assistant professors, Department of Biochemistry, K. Srangasami College of Arts and Science, and the conveners, Dr. G. Saravanan, head, Department of Biochemistry, K. Sir Kass. Mr. K. S. Shanmugam, head, Department of Microbiology, K. Sir Kass, and Dr. M. Arthi, Head, Department of Biotechnology, K. Sir Kass. Your hard work, meticulous planning, unwavering commitment behind the scenes have ensured the seamless execution of this series. From coordinating with resource persons to managing the technical aspects and handling registrations, your efforts have been nothing short of exceptional. So this success is a direct reflection of your dedication and expertise. We extend our gratitude to the institutions and organizations that supported and promoted this event. Your encouragement and collaboration have played a crucial role in bringing together such a diverse and vibrant group of participants and speakers. We also like to extend our Sincere thanks to Dr. Suresh, the librarian, Kesar College of Arts and Science for facilitating our online meetings through Microsoft Teams. And sincere thanks to poster design team, Ms. Bhuvna, IQAC, Kesar College. And also special thanks goes to Mr. P. Chandrasekharan, PhD scholar for technical help in conducting online lecture series. As we conclude, let us remember that the knowledge shared and the connections made during this series are invaluable assets that we carry forward. May we continue to build upon these insights and foster a spirit of collaboration and learning in all our future endeavors. Once again, thank you to everyone who has been a part of this journey. Your contributions have made this program a resounding success and we look forward to the opportunities for growth and learning lie ahead. Thank you all. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, sir. Thank you all the participants. Thank you. So thank you, sir. So dear participants, so the attendance form has been posted in the chat box and also will be posted in the group. So kindly fill it. And uh, those who have attended five sessions only will get the participation certificates. Thank you. Thank you for your uh, cooperation in this regard. We look forward to the future events. Thank you so much.